Hi, and welcome to Knitting Blooms. Today is December 31st, Saturday, December 31st, and this is episode number 36. And welcome to the show. And you might notice, I don't know if you will or not, but I have a new camera. Santa brought me a new camera. Now, I don't know if Santa brought me a new camera because he was tired of me using his or tired of me having to have him help me all the time <laughs> because his camera was a lot more advanced than the other cameras that I was using. I don't need anything extremely extravagant for the podcast, but I need something that works. So <laughs> hoping that all will go well with this camera. I've did lots and lots of testing this week. And I think this is going to work. I'm still kind of fiddling with the settings on how the lighting works. So you, you might see from show to show different lighting effects or whatever. But we'll see how that goes. I think it's going to be a lot easier for me to record on this camera. It's a kind of like a a camcorder camera versus the flip or the SLR which is what my husband has and I don't have to worry about laptop noise if I have a webcam so moving right along now that you know I have a new camera which was a very surprising Christmas gift because I I had it on my list but I really didn't think that he was gonna get me that for Christmas but I was very happy that he got that I also got um, one of those photo booths from um, Think Geek to take more, um, better pictures of my yarn, which was awesome. So, I had a fabulous Christmas. Not only did I get some really cool toys, but this week I also got gifted a ton of patterns. And I thank everybody so much for them. You guys are going to keep me busy this year because... I got a ton of patterns and I want to cast them all on. So I'm just going to run through quickly what patterns I received and from whom. Not, this is not in any particular order. It's just how they, I have them arranged here as I printed them out. But um, I printed them all out and then I'm thinking, I really need to get an iPad. I have been reluctant to get an iPad because I have a Kindle and I have an iPhone and really I kept thinking do I really need to spend the money on an iPad will it really be that much more convenient to have an iPad and I think I've pretty much resolved myself to the fact that an iPad is probably in my future um, we'll see what happens my boss has kind of hinted about getting iPads for everybody for Christmas where we're having our holiday party next weekend. So maybe I'll get lucky or maybe I'll just be buying one myself sometime soon. So let's get back to the patterns that I received. And like I said, I got a lot of patterns and I am so excited about all these patterns because they're all patterns that I want, want to knit. And, um, yeah, I'm going to definitely be busy. <laughs> so we'll start first with the catkin that was gifted to me by Diane from the Knittables podcast. And this is another thing that I love about this camera. I can hold things up really close and it will focus in for you. I love that. My husband's SLR did not, you have to focus by pushing the, the button. So if I tried to hold something closer to the camera, it didn't focus. Anyway, so thank you, Diane, for the catkin. I think I saw this one on uh, Knit One Heart 2. I think that Wendy did it on uh, Knit One Heart 2 a while back. And she is a huge enabler because it seems like every pattern that she does, I love. And I go out and get the pattern and put it in my queue. So thank you, Diane, for that pattern. The next one is Asking for Roses. And this was gifted to me by S.S. Burke. I'm pulling them out of the sleeve a little bit so you guys can see it. 
and this is asking for roses and this is a shawl and I love it thank you Stephanie I'm like I said I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to be able to cast on all of these projects this year the next one is uh, Bash for Bu Bashful Butterflies, and this was gifted to me by Aunt Susan, and her, and that's Susan. That's one picture, and then this is the other picture. I love this shawl. It is so pretty. It's got so much texture and detail, and it just looks like it's going to be a whole lot of fun to make. So thank you very much for that. And the next pattern was, and I can't pronounce it, but Lisa from Fiber Nymph from 90% uh, Knitting, she gifted me this pattern. And here's, here's the name. I can't pronounce it. Pamaya? I, I don't know. I'm not good at pronouncing weird things, but this is what it looks like. This was one of the ones that I think um, Aaron and I were talking about doing with our wool mys. And we ended up going with Magrathea instead. But I am definitely going to cast this one on. I love the detail in this. Again, there's texture and lace. And I just think it's going to be an awesome, awesome shawl. So thank you so much, Lisa. The next two patterns were gifted to me by Terry Knits. She is a viewer. And... These are for washcloths, and they there's a set of eight you can see there in in uh, in the set. Oops, and I am so excited. Let me see if I can get that one, that last one to show a little bit better. I'm excited about doing these. The, this one and the next one, which is um, this one, is summer cloths, and these are by Kristen uh, Pate. I think that's how you pronounce her name. Her, her, um, she's on Ravelry. And the next one is the Spring Cloth. And this was also gifted to me by Terry, Terry Knits. And again, I'm very excited about casting on some more washcloths because I have to be honest with you. I made those washcloths, um, in the last few weeks. And those, it was the, um, grandma's favorite washcloth. And... I actually used my very first hand-knitted washcloth this week. I have made washcloths before. I have never actually used them because for whatever reason, I just couldn't see using something that I knit to wash dishes or whatever. So I never used it. But I said, you know what, I've knit these. What am I going to do with them? I'm going to use them. So I did, and I love them. So there will be plenty of washcloths in my future. The last pattern that was gifted to me was gifted to me by Valerie, my friend Valerie, who also does the colorwork mittens. And she gifted me one of her patterns, the Marley's Garden, and because I was watching her knit an, another pair. She's knit like three or maybe four pairs of this pattern of hers. And this was her most recent pattern, and you will see why I decided I had to knit this one. Yes. All those bright, pretty bright colors. I absolutely love it. And thank you so much, Valerie, for, for gifting me this. And I have to show you, she gifted me this. Excuse me. And I started to print it out, and I left my water. I poured myself a cup, a glass of water, and I left it over there. I'll go get it in a second. I started to print this out, and I'm like, wow, how many pages is this pattern? Well, she includes three different, well, they're the same pattern, but she shows you three different variations. And I could, I guess I could take them out of the the plastic. I keep I keep my my uh, patterns in plastic when I print them because it just keeps the the pattern a little nicer. The paper and um, 
then I could put the stickies right on the, the, the plastic part. But she includes three variations in this pattern when you buy it. So you've got like the winter one with the, the red and the green, and you've got the springy one with the, with the very bright colors. And then you have, I think this was the original Marley's Garden with the oranges and the greens. You get all of these when you buy the Marley's Garden pattern from her on Ravelry. So I thought that was very cool. I mean, you could, most people could just, you know, substitute different colors, but I think that is awesome. And that she has the charts on all the different colors as well. But I just think that that was totally awesome that she included all of the different varieties um, with the pattern. So thank you all for the wonderful, wonderful patterns this week. I am, like I said, I'm so excited about casting these on. I have a lot and I was going through my, I have on my computer, I save all of my PDF patterns for things that I've downloaded off the web and whatnot. Not my Ravelry things because my Ravelry things usually just stay in Ravelry. And they usually just stay there till I'm ready to knit them. But I wanted to print these out so that I could show you what I received. Um, but I have a huge folder on my computer of all the PDFs of different patterns that I have downloaded from the internet or just collected over the years. So an iPad really would help me a lot. So we'll see how how that goes in my future. But yeah, I am very excited about all these patterns that you guys have gifted me this this week. And like I said, it's definitely going to be keeping me busy this year. Okay, so now I have my water. <laughs> I can actually get a drink. So again, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I so appreciate all the uh, patterns this week. And all the wishes of happy holidays and what have you. Speaking of holidays, I thought this week I would get a lot of knitting done, but I didn't. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but I had planned on getting a lot of knitting done on Christmas and not so much on Christmas Eve because on Christmas Eve I was finishing up the last minute stuff. I recorded last Friday and then I still had um, some things to finish up Saturday morning and then all of the presents to wrap. So I did do knitting Saturday morning but it was gift it was the knitting that I needed to get completed for gifting and I didn't do much knitting after that. Christmas Eve, we spent with my in-laws. We went over and had a wonderful, wonderful Mexican meal. My mother-in-law is Mexican, and she always makes the best, the best Mexican meals. And that's one, that's one reason why I typically make Thanksgiving dinner, because I like the traditional turkey and whatnot. Not that she wouldn't cook a turkey if... We asked her to cook a turkey on Thanksgiving, but it's kind of just become tradition that I make Thanksgiving dinner and she does Christmas. It's It kind of helps, too, so that it kind of offsets a little bit so not one person is doing all of the holiday meals. So we had a fabulous time Christmas Eve at my in-laws, and we just really enjoyed the evening and had a great meal, had time to spend with um, the family, and then we were able to come home. And then on Christmas Day, Steve and I just spent the day together at home. We didn't even get out of our pajamas. We got up Christmas morning, and we opened up our gifts, and then we proceeded to play with them for the rest of the day. I had, um, he had bought me the camera, he had bought me um, the photo booth kit, he bought me some speakers. I like to have my, when I'm playing my music and stuff at the office, I like to put it on like a little speaker set on my phone. But the speaker set that I had for my iPod 
for whatever reason was not compatible with the iPhone, so I needed a new speaker set, so he got me a little desktop speaker set for that. And, um, yeah, so we did a lot of playing around with that kind of stuff on Christmas Day, which is why I didn't get a whole lot of knitting done. And I'm going to have to get up again because I forgot to bring my spinning over. But I'll wait until I get to that segment. Anyway, so, yeah, Christmas Day, lots of time spent just playing with the new toys and stuff. And, uh, and then Monday, which I had the day off work, I thought I was going to get lots of knitting done. We ended up having to take the cat to the vet. Mickey has been not feeling well for a while. And it's nothing major. It was just I think he had some upset stomach or some kind of indigestion problem. We were having some issues. And so we decided to take him in and get him checked out. And everything checked out fine. There was he, We did a bunch of different blood work. And everything checked out fine. And he's been on antibiotic and... Um, Famotidine for an upset stomach since then and I think whatever it was was a bug that he had because he's things have been a lot better this week so but it was expensive to go and get all that blood work done for to find out yeah he's perfectly healthy other than maybe he's got some kind of a bug but you know what are you gonna do I'd rather you know find out and make sure that he is okay and it's not something serious than to let it go. And then this week, Tuesday through Friday, I worked, and because I was sick last week and took off a couple of days, and when the days that I was there, I wasn't really at 100%, so I wasn't, you know, at my full speed of getting my job done, I had a lot to catch up with this week. Plus, I had lots of year-end stuff to take care of, so not a whole lot of knitting time at work this week as well. So not a whole lot to show you other than that, but we're already almost 20 minutes into the podcast and I haven't even sh showed you any of what, what I did this week. So let me just pause it one more time so I can run over and get the, the um, bobbin off of my wheel, which I had planned on taking off before I started, but forgot. So hang tight one minute, please. Okay. Since... I went and ran and got this. We'll talk about spinning first, even though it's not on my list first. So, last week I talked to you about... Oops. Sorry about that. Okay, so last week I talked to you about the possibility that I was going to start some more fiber on my wheel. Because I finished somewhere under here. I finished my Knit Girls Fiber, and there it is in its lovely goodness. Still in the skein. I am planning on starting a project with that, but we'll get to that in a minute. That came off the wheel last week, um, and I was thinking about starting a new project, and I talked about starting the BFL No, I'm sorry. The Polworth from Blue Moon Fiber Arts because I wasn't quite sure. What are you doing over there, Peanut? I wasn't quite sure if I was going to like it or not. And I kind of wanted to start spinning it to see if it was something that I was going to like. And I love it. This is the Polworth fiber, and I split this into three separate little bumps. I have it comes in an eight ounce bump, and I am planning on three plying this. So this is just one third, or actually a part of the third, because I've already spun some of it. And I'm really, really, really enjoying this. In fact, I'm enjoying it so much that just before I sat down to record today. I ordered me some more, and I think it's in the zippity doo dah colorway. So yeah, I'm I'm loving it. So here is the bobbin, and I am trying to spin this a little bit thicker than what I had spun 
my last fiber. Actually, probably not quite as thick, but because it's going to be a three ply, it's going to be a little bit thicker. I am loving, loving this fiber. Um, I did make sure that when I started it, that I was pulling from the end, that it, that the fibers came out more, more easily. And I, what I do is I pull off a, a little segment and I pre-draft it out a little bit and then I spin and it is really nice to work with. I love it. I'm very excited about getting this worked up. I meant to weigh this to find out exactly how much I have spun so far, but I forgot to weigh it before I got started. I think each bump was around, now I've got fiber in my eye. I think each bump was around 75 to 78 grams. So this is the first third, and again, it's the, it's the Grinchy colorway, and it's the Polworth from Blue Moon Fiber Arts. Loving it. Here's the, uh, the tag. So yeah, it was eight ounces of Polworth. So, and like I did last time when I was doing the, cl the Cloud Lover um, Haunted Vineyard, I created a card. And I meant to bring over the other one from when I did Cloud Lover. But when I did the Cloud Lover one, I just did, I put the singles on my card. This time, I decided to also put a sampling of part of the plied yarn on my card. And somehow I must have, probably from putting my stuff in and out of this bag, I've loosened it up. But here's my card, and I have the date on it that I started it, the fiber name and colorway, and this first part here is a single, then this is a two-ply, and then this part here is a three-ply. So I could see how, what the girth of the yarn was going to be with each one. Now, I kind of like the two-ply of this a little bit better than the three-ply because the three-ply is a little bit heavy for my liking. Um, I was thinking I would want a fingering weight. This is probably a heavy fingering weight, um, but I do think I want to do a three-ply only because I'm probably going to want to make a shawl and some socks. But I do like the look of the two ply. So I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna kind of I'm gonna spin it and then decide when I get closer. I haven't done like the wraps per inch on these two. Um, I don't know what I have done here. Um, I haven't done a wraps per inch on on these to know exactly how many um, wraps per inch each one of the the, the three-ply and the two-ply is. So, we'll see. And what I did for the three-ply is I just took a length out and I put three singles together and let it kind of twist up on itself just so I could get an idea. I know it's going to be a little bit different when it's actually plied because it's going to be more barber pulled and stuff like that, but we'll worry about that when we get to it. But I'm very excited about spinning this fiber. And I do like the card idea. Um... I'm glad I tried that the last time, and I'm glad that I went even a step further this time by doing the plies. So, and I do, again, when I'm working on this, as I'm spinning it, I do occasionally check my single um, that I'm spinning with the singles that are on the card, just to make sure I'm, you know, close to where I'm supposed to be. I'm sure that there's still going to be some thick and thin sp spots, because, hello... Not a professional spinner here. So, but it's fun. I love it. And on top of that, I've also been working on the Yarn Hollow BFL and Tussa Silk that, I've been, that I have been working on forever. This is the final third. And this is all I have left. 
of the Yarn Hollow BFL and Tussa Silk. I don't know how many grams it's left. Didn't weigh it yet. But I have done a good bit of spinning on this. I did take this to my in-laws for um, Christmas Eve. So after we had our dinner and we were all just kind of sitting around chatting, I pulled out the spindle. So that was fun. And there that is. Again, this one is quite thin. And again, this is the, the final third. I do have two full bobbins of this, and I am planning on three-plying it. And you know what? <laughs> I also forgot to plug in the, plug in the camera because I have the plug right here. So we'll have to watch to make sure that I don't run short on a battery. Because I was going to plug it in just to be sure that I didn't run out of battery. Anyway, so yeah, this is coming right along. I've been taking this to work with me and working on it a little bit when I have a couple minutes at work as well. Which is another reason why there hasn't been much knitting this week. Because I've been spinning a fair bit. A fair bit, I would say. I do hope to get this... Uh, finished up fairly quickly, hopefully by the end of January. There should be no reason why I can't get this done by the end of January. Um, because I would like to make something out of this yarn. And I have the other two-thirds done, and then as soon as I can get this done, I will be able to ply that up and knit with it. So that is that spinning. And I think that's all the spinning. So, we'll move right along to finished objects. Excuse me. Okay, finished objects. Look what this is. Some more dishcloths. I finished two more. I, these are ones that I've had on the needles um, a for a couple weeks. I haven't been working on them. But... I finally finished them. Again, this is the uh, sugars and cream. Yeah, sugars and cream. Just the the variegated or whatever. And it's the grandma's favorite dishcloth. Love it! I am very tempted to get more cotton. I do have, I don't know, probably about maybe six balls of cotton. Um up there. I do have a huge amount of cotton. You can see this here. This is the cotton that I use for Bacardi. It is mercerized cotton. It's not the same feel as this cotton, so I don't know if mercerized cotton would make the same kind of dishcloth. Probably not, but I might try it with some of those patterns that Terry Knits gave me because they're solids with the, the the knits and pearls that make the pattern and I think that the the um the pattern would really pop with that with that yarn so I might try a dishcloth or two with that mercerized cotton if you know that mercerized cotton is the wrong thing to use for dishcloths could you please let me know so I don't waste my time um or waste the yarn for that matter but I might try that if you guys think that it would be a decent yarn for dishcloths. But I have two dishcloths done. That means I have four for myself because I have given some away as gifts. And I plan on knitting more. I think I have... I think this was the only other ball of this color. I have um, two more balls of the brighter green or brighter blues and yellows and then pastel pinks or pastel blues and purples. So definitely foresee more dishcloths in my future, in the near future, because they're quick projects and I love them. I love them. And I don't, I don't like to use a dishcloth you know, other than for like one day. That's why I'd never use dishcloths for a long time because they just get really nasty in the sink. So I, for for as long as I can remember, I we use paper towels. I just pull off a paper towel when I need to wash something, put a little dish soap on it, use it, 
And then when I'm done, it goes in the trash. Sometimes I'll leave it on the, the ledge of the sink if I know I'm going to be washing some more dishes in the, the near future within the next couple of hours. But if the dish, if the paper towel dries up, it's in the trash. So that's my one and only finished object this week. And, but I did make progress on some other projects. The first project that I kind of made backwards progress on, you know what this is? This is the fiber that I spun up not too long ago. It is the BFL that I dyed. I spun it and um, Navajo plied it. And it was going to be a Multnomah. I started the Multnomah, I don't know, a month or so ago. And I did, I don't know, 15 rows or so. And didn't like how the fabric was turning out with the size needle. So I bumped up the needle size. And I started it again. And I was liking it. I think I was like six rows into it. But I was liking it. But I have so much stuff on the needles, and I have plans to start so much, so many new projects in the ne in the coming weeks. I thought, you know what? I'm my heart's not into the Multnomah right now. This will someday become a Multnomah, I'm sure. Just not right now. And I don't, for whatever reason, I don't like to leave things on the needle or on the wall well, on the needles and then caked up for a long time. So I took it off the needles. I reskeined it up. I washed it again. To I soaked it, you know, so the the um, the fibers could relax again. And it's back in the skein to someday become a Multnomah, but not right now, because we have lots of projects. The projects that I did work on this week are the Magrathea, and I did. I don't know how many repeats. Let's see. Not that many. I think I want to say four. Let's see. Maybe three. Three. I worked on this this earlier this week. And I love it. I really, really love it. I love the pattern. I love the Volmise. Um, it's just I didn't, I didn't get a lot of knitting done this week. So, there's my stitch marker, and like I said, I think it's one, maybe three repeats, three, maybe four repeats. So, there it is. It's wonderful. I love it, love it, love it, love it. This project and my mittens, which I didn't work on at all this week. Are going to be my priority. Yeah, because both of these need to be done by the end of the month if I want to finish the knit along with the rest of you. We already have a couple people who have finished their uh, Magrathea. And they're beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And so I want to finish mine so I can wear it. I love it. I love the I love the uh, the Volmise, and I am knitting this on. It's got to be a four because it's um, it, an interchangeable. I don't have a, a a guide here or needle needle gauge or whatever, but love it. I've heard that some people have gone up to 25 and maybe as many as 30 repeats. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I'll get that far. I definitely will get 25. I think I'm on 19 right now, and I still have quite a bit of yarn. Um, I want to say when I, before I did the last three repeats, I had over 100 grams, and I think I need to have 37 grams left um, to do the other edging, the other lace edging. So it's coming right along. Like I said, this will be... A priority project in the coming weeks. Maybe I'll even sit down and work on it today. 
if I can pull myself away from the spinning wheel because that I'm really hooked on. It's I love that. I love that Pullworth fiber from Blue Moon. So it's coming. This is coming right along. Love, love, love it. Love seeing all of the progress people are posting in the group. Love hearing about everybody talking about their project and starting it and all of that. I love the increased chatter on the boards. So keep it keep it coming, guys, because I love it. I love to get on there and see that there's lots of interaction between you and you know, asking questions or just sharing your progress. It's it's fabulous. So that's Magrathea. And again, no progress on um, Stinky Pink this week. I feel really, really bad. But I just really didn't have a time where I could concentrate on that. Where I had to have... Because Stinky Pink, I have to have the charts. I can't just sit down to it like um, Citron, which I'm going to show you right now. I Citron, I can just sit down to it and go. I don't need my charts because I know that my increases are on row 1, row 7, or increases or decreases. Row 1, row 7, row 9, and row 19. I know that. So I just pay attention to make sure that I know when I'm on those rows, and then when I am, I pull out the chart and look at what I need to do. So here is my Citron. It looks very bright in this camera right now. Hopefully it's showing a pretty reasonable color. Anyway, here's my stitch marker. It is like one row into section five. And I'm almost done with section five. I want to say I have, hmm, let's see how many rows I have left of section five. I'm on row 17. So I have row 17 and 18, then I have an increase row, then I have um, the pearl back, and then I start section six if I'm going to do a section six, which I think I am because I think I would like to have a larger shawl. Plus I have a whole nother skein of this. This is what I have left of the first skein. And this is the Malabrigo um, baby merino lace. Malabrigo baby merino lace. So that's what I have left. It's a good bit. I don't have, I didn't weigh it, so I really don't know how much is in this ball. But So I need to decide in the next four rows whether I'm going to go ahead and just start. Actually, I don't think I would have to start and find out in the next four rows because then after you do your increase row and then your pearl back row, you, you would just be increasing for the, the pucker section for row six or section six, but the pucker section and the ruffle, I think are the same. So I would have to decide in the next 10 rows or so. I think I'll have to check the pattern again, but I probably will do, I want, I'm, I, when I started this project, I thought I was going to do seven repeats and I think I still am going to do seven repeats just got to get my mind wrapped around it. But I think this project is going to go on the back burner a little bit until I can finish up Magrathea and the Colorwork Mittens, which both need to be done by the end of this month. This was the, Citron was the knit along that I did with, that I started with Dramatic Knits. I think this project had to be done at the end of November. I'm obviously not anywhere near done. If I, especially if I'm going to do two more sections. And boy, on those pucker rows where you double the stitches, they're long rows. It takes a while to do those rows. So that's Citron and my progress on that. Now, I didn't I didn't um, calculate my yardage yet because I still have a few hours before the cutoff for the Knit Your Stash. So I'm planning on knitting when I'm done with this, hopefully um, getting on a virtual chat with some people on Plurk and um, knitting for a bit. So we'll see. And then I'll calcu calculate my final yardage um, probably tomorrow morning.
before I start knitting. So we're 40 minutes in and I still got a bit to talk about, so I'm going to try and move this right along. We talked about the, the Knit Girls fiber that I spun up. I am hopefully going to start the project for this, and I think it's called Evain is what I think the pattern name is. Um, I think that's how you pronounce it. It's Y-V-A-I-N-E. And it's one of the patterns that they've chosen for the Spin Along Knit Along. And I think the pattern calls for slightly a little bit more yarn than what I have. But just looking at the pattern, I think it's a pattern that you can kind of fudge the, um, the rows if you need to shorten a section or whatever. So I think I'm going to knit that that shawl with this and I'm gonna cast it on hopefully this week I'm probably gonna cast on I think the pattern calls for a size 8 needle and I think that's what I'm gonna do because um, it is a thicker I tried to spin this a little bit thicker than what I had been spinning because I was spinning lace weight before the last thing that I spun up was the um, Four Rivers yarn and fiber and it was the merino and I got like 790 yards or some crazy thing like that. Maybe, probably more than that because I think there was still one little section that was left on the, um, the bobbin after I finished plying it. And there was one bobbin that had a little bit more. And I think the first part was 790 yards. And I probably got at least 10, if not 30 yards from the... The leftover so this will definitely be cast on probably this week because this has to be done by the end of February so I've got a little bit more time on this one but I do want to get it started because it does have to be done by the end of February so that's that um, the next thing on my needles which it's not a huge priority but since my husband kind of uh, promised it to somebody it's going to be done. Uh, remember the hat that I made my husband for Christmas? The little naughty hat? Well, he loved it. And he proceeded to wear it out to a Go Hardware store. Um, I think that was on Monday or Tuesday. And the cashier at the store fell in love with the hat. and She had to know where he got it. And of course... He told her I, that I knit it for her for him. And she's like, well, do you think that she would knit me one? So we picked up the yarn this week so I can make her a hat. Now, really, <laughs> I have so much stuff on the needles, and I have other knitting for hire stuff that's coming up. I really don't have time to knit the hat, but Steve thought she was such a nice, I don't know, she was a young a young girl. And she, she's like, yeah, she thought they were moose. They're actually, I think they're, they were reindeer was what the, how the pattern was written up. But she's like, yeah, I've even got a moose tattoo. I collect things with moose. I have to have that hat. So Steve, like I said, he went out, got the yarn. This is the color she wants. Um, it's Karen Simply Soft yarn. And it's black and tan. So you'll be seeing that on the needles very soon coming up. And I have some more stash enhancement. And that did not work. I've been having some issues with um, my nitpicks. And I'm sure that everybody's had this problem where they come out of the, the cable comes out of the, the thing. And I was trying something tonight that obviously did not work. I, I've tried um, super glue before, and the super glue, sometimes it dries too quickly. So I was trying something that, I was trying E6000. It's not quite, it ne I need something that's going to be like acidic that's going to kind of melt this plastic so when I stick it in there. But the super glue dries too quickly and sometimes you get it halfway in there and then it will stop. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that. And then you'll have like a, a lip. And I didn't want that so I was trying something new. But obviously this is not going to work. So I'm going to have to try something else. 
I will keep you posted on what I find that works. I was hoping it was going to work. I had this in my head that it was going to work, but obviously it didn't. So let's talk about stash enhancement real quick. Actually, first, before I get into that, I want to talk about the drawings that are coming up next week. We've got the thousand member drawing that I will be doing, which is actually going to be like probably close to 1100 member drawing or 1200 member drawing. I think that we're over, we're, we're close to 1200 members now. So again, however many people are in the group when I go to record next week, that's the number that's going to go into the random number. And um, I've got quite a few prizes. I pulled out some more things from my stash. I went through and just decided that I'm either not in love with the yarn anymore or I have too much of the same color or I never really knew what I was going to make with the yarn and I can't put it together to figure something out. So instead of stressing myself over what I'm going to make with something, if I can give it to somebody else and they are going to use it and love it, I would much rather do that. So I have lots of prizes, but I have lots of stuff coming into my stash this week too. So let's start with this one. This one I just received today. This is Diabolical, and I just happened to snag this up. She had a, a sale... She started a sale earlier this week, and it was like, I don't know, 30, I think it was 30% off or something like that. And she had these four skeins. It's four skeins of, the colorway is Fire Red, and it's 51% organic cotton and 49% bamboo rayon. And really, I have no idea what I'm going to make with this, but it's pink. You know, it says Fire Red, but it's more, it, it's more of a pinky color. But... I figured out, I'll, I'll figure something out. And if at some point I can't figure something out, then it will go into a drawing. So there it is. It's from Diabolical. And it's, it's a pink. It's kind of a, a, a peachy pink. But it works. It's, um, like I said, there's four skeins and each skein has 434 yards. So I'm thinking a, um, a cardigan of some sort because I like lightweight sweaters that's why I when I buy something like this I I figure well I could make I could make a shawl with it or socks or whatever I'm not so sure how cotton would work um, for socks but because it would stretch I think too much and then the, and then the bamboo so we'll see it'll be something wonderful so, and that's Di from Diabolical Yarns, and she is on Ravelry and Etsy, Diabolical Yarns. Diabolical.com. And there you go. So that was one thing that just came this week. Actually, all this came this week because I didn't have it last week when I recorded and I ordered more stuff today. Like I already told you, I already ordered from um, Blue Moon Fiber Arts. I ordered more fiber. And I also placed an order with Miss Babs. And I was pleasantly surprised when I put some yarn in my cart. And she must be having an end of the year sale or something. Because everything was discounted. So... <coughs> Instead of buying two skeins of yarn, which is what my plan was, I ended up buying four. I bought um, two skeins of the Yauza yarn um, and for a sweater, probably the February Lady sweater, and then two balls of sock yarn, one in the same color as the sweater so that I could have matching socks with my sweater, and then also another skein of sock yarn we can never have too much sock yarn. I think you can see this is my shop this is my sock yarn shelf and it's all sock yarn. <laughs> oh and and this is all sock yarn too on this shelf too. 
this is mostly my Volmice, but yeah. I haven't counted to find out how many pairs of socks I could make if I knit socks with all of that yarn, but at last count, it was over 70 pairs. Here is another thing that I ordered last week, I think, or two weeks ago, because this was a custom order. This is from Desert Vista Dye Works, and this is her gradient yarns, and it is in the Lavender Rose colorway, and it's 490 y yards for this skein, and... It's fingering weight. I don't know what the yarn is, but there's that. I was originally going to buy some lace weight from her, and I couldn't decide what colorway. And we, I kind of contacted her, and we went back and forth. And then she had um, pointed me to certain certain colors, and then all of a sudden. I changed my mind completely <laughs> and said I was going to buy fingering weight. She thought I was a little crazy. <laughs> I am. I can't. I cannot make up my mind. And let me tell you, I have a story to tell you about how I can never make a decision. My husband and I, we say, let's go out to dinner. Nobody can decide where to go to dinner. So we end up flipping a coin. I have, and, and that's how it is always for, for, for going out to eat, unless we have a specific thing that we're craving. I have some over 400 books on my Kindle. I can't decide what book to read when I finish a book. So you know what I started doing? I started using the random number generator <laughs> to pick my next book. <laughs> because I would say that probably 50% of the books on my Kindle are books that I've downloaded for free that I have no idea about the author. You know, they're books that when I read the description, they sounded like something that I might enjoy, but I don't know who, who the author is or their writing style or whatever and if I'm going to like it. But really, I've, I think I've only read two of the books that I've bought, well, that I've bought, that I've got for free. I've liked both of them. I've enjoyed both of them. So, obviously, I just like to read. So, it doesn't really matter what I'm reading as long as I'm reading something. So, yeah. So, I started using the random number generator. <laughs> I just, what I do is I'll, I have, if I, if there's 48 pages, I know that there's nine um, books on each page. I just to the random number generator and it tells me, okay, read this book next. The only time I, I divert from that is if the book that's chosen is in a series and it's not the next book that I have to read. If it's not the next book, then I go and find the next book in that particular series and then I'll read that book, but that's the only time that I deviate from it because I can't make a decision. It's like, it's hard enough to make a decision about what I'm going to knit next and even then... I usually get my husband's opinion and ask him. So anyway, back to this. This is the Desert Vista Dye Works um, gradient in the fingering weight. And again, this is the Lavender Rose colorway. I have no idea what I'm going to make with this. But I know it's going to be something absolutely wonderful. It's not going to be socks. It'll definitely, most definitely be a shawl. Because I love the way that it, the gradients look in, the, in shawls. So, I just don't know what pattern yet. So, this is one thing I got. Again, I don't remember. I, it's got to be Merino, I want to say. It just says finger. I think the FW is fingering weight. I don't know. Anyway, it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful shawl. Lavender Rose, Mono Gradient, fingering weight. Yep. It doesn't say the, the fiber content. That's all right. These next ones, I blame on Megan from Stockin' It Zombies. She mentioned this yarn on her podcast, oh, I don't know, four or five episodes ago. And when she was talking about it, 
I kind of jotted it down as something that I thought I wanted to try. This is Lorna's Laces Soul Me. And I didn't do a whole lot of research, and I only have what I remember from the Stockinette Zombies episode where she talks about it, about the outlast that's in the, as a fiber, fiber content in this yarn. It's 55% superwash merino, 15% nylon, and 30% outlast. And what I understand about that outlast is it's some kind of a fiber that works with the chemistry or the heat of your body. And if, it's, if your feet are cold, then it warms your feet up. If your feet are warm, then it cools your feet down. Something to that effect. Now, that's why I bought it, because... My feet can never decide whether they're going to be hot or cold. So I thought, I'm going to try it and see how I like it. Well, I haven't even knit with this stuff yet, but I love the feel of this yarn. <laughs> and I got it. And I seriously went back to do, go buy some more. And then I decided I wanted to buy the Miss Babs instead. Because I bought three skeins of this Soulmate. Hopefully, this will get me through... October when I go to um, Rhinebeck, or at least until the, the yarn diet is over. So these are the colorways that I got, and technically I have something like three more hours before midnight, and the yarn doesn't start until midnight on January 1st. So if I find my way over to Jimmy Bean's Wool or Simply Sock Yarn... I might find some more coming to me. I don't know. Still a few more hours. <laughs> I never made it to my yarn store yesterday because it was raining. I was going to record yesterday and um, I decided I wasn't going to record because I needed to go to the yarn store one more time. But it was pouring rain and I had to get out of my car to go to the bank because the drive through line was too long. So I was soaked. I started to drive down to the yarn store and it was raining so hard. And I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to have to find a place to park and then you got to feed the meter. And so it's not like you can just jump out and run into the store. And I turned around and I came home because I was like, I didn't want to mess with that. I was already soaked as it was because I had to get out of my car to go to the bank. Anyway, Soulmate from Lorna's Laces. Love this yarn. If you have not tried this yarn, go to Jimmy Bean's Wool because they have a huge selection of it. And also, um, Simply Sock Yarn has, has a good selection of it too. Those are really the only two websites that I went to. I'm sure that there's plenty of other um, online shops that have it. And maybe even your local knitting shop has it. It's awesome yarn. Just the feel of it. This colorway is Desert Flower. Let me put it like that so you can see all the colors at once. Desert Flower. And it's pretty. It's got the, the purpley pink and the splash of the blue. And then this one is Purple Iris. And it's got the purple. And I really don't know how this colorway is going to show up on camera. But it's the color on the... the um, the little screen there is more blue than it really is but it's it's a greenish it's a greenish blue but I don't know and then it's got the purple and a little bit of the um kind of like the uh, t greenish tan and then this one tomfoolery look at that doesn't that look like fun mostly oranges bright a bright um, yellowy orange and then a darker orange and then goes into the I don't know what color you would call that like a purpley pink but that is going to be fun 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 I can't wait to cast these on I have too many things that I want to cast on too many pairs of socks all the different socks sock yarn that I've purchased recently some of the things that I have received as gifts from different people too many things to cast on. So, again, this is the, the Lorna's Laces Soulmate. And it's considered a super fine weight. There's approximately 425 yards, and the recommended needle size is US 1. So those are the stash enhancements. Like I said, 
I have more stash enhancements coming. I um, ordered some more Volmise lace from a D stash that I will be using for my Mystic Roses uh, shawl. Hopefully by the end of the month I will be starting that. I have the Miss Babs that I just ordered, the Blue Moon Fiber Arts that I just ordered. I have some Sundara yarn that I ordered a week or so ago that's a custom dye thing. What else do I have? I think there's one other thing. I have some Volmise Natural coming that my friend Valerie ordered for me because I need some natural to make some wonderful Volmise mittens. And you know the yarn diet starts in like, I don't know, I think like three hours. I think it's nine o'clock now. Oh no, that clock must be wrong. Oh no, I have four more hours till midnight. It's only 7.53. Then the yarn diet starts. But I still have time to go buy some more Soulmate if I really have a hankering for it. And then, really, the yarn diet is going to be in effect. And um, I want you guys to hold me to it because I have too much yarn. And really, another thing that I think is going to help a lot, I'm kind of wanting to buy a sidekick. H having everybody talk about it, you know, Laura, Leslie, and Karen, and Tammy from The Proverbial Knitter, and... Katie from Knitting on the Fly. Oh, and now Amy from Knitting in Circles got one for Christmas. So many people are getting them, and they look like so much fun. I already have the ladybug, so all of my stuff, my woolly winder and all my bobbins and everything will go on the sidekick. So I'm thinking maybe I want one. So maybe I'll be saving up all my yarn stash budget and buy me a sidekick in the next few months. My husband is working on a um, e-spinner for me. He's actually going to make it to work with my woolly winder, my woolly winder from my ladybug. So that will be really fun if he ever gets it done. He's been working on it now for a few months. He's making it from scratch, and he has it's trial and error. So. So yeah, so there could be a sidekick in my future, but I need to save up for it. I can't, I don't have the money to just go out and buy it right now. So that might be happening for my yarn budget if I can control myself. And I think that's what's going to really keep me on, on track with that. Because if I know I'm stashing that money for a sidekick and for my trip to Rhinebeck, I think I can stick to my diet. So let's see. I think that's about it. I'm going to go and sign off and possibly be talking to some of you on Virtual Midnight in the next little bit. So I wish everyone a Happy New Year. You can reach me on Ravelry and Plurk and, oh, Pinterest. I'm on Pinterest now. I'm, I'm Blooming Knitter on all of those places. I am also on the Daily Mile now. I've heard Sock Bunny, Kimberly from the Sock Bunny podcast, talk about it. And I joined that yesterday, and I am Miss Aerobics. That's M-S-A-R-O-B-I-X on there. I'm also on Spark People, I think, as Miss Aerobics. I am on Google Plus and Facebook as Tina Robbins. I think that's it. If you are watching this on iTunes, please go and leave a star rating or a comment if you have enjoyed the show. And do the same for all your other podcasts. I haven't left any reviews myself in the past week, so I think I am going to do that tomorrow. Do a couple of reviews on some podcasts. I've been watching some new podcasts this week. And since I'm already over hour, I don't think I'm going to stop and talk about them today, but... Hopefully I'll have time to do that next week. So, 
that's all for now. I hope you have a happy, happy new year, and I will talk to you next week. Bye for now.